Welcome to the NFL Week 8 Sunday Night Football Game Picks Breakdown. Talking about the Chicago Bears at the Los Angeles Chargers. I'm your host, Jacob Wayne, joined here, as always, by Cody Malmstrom and Will Schwartz. And a special guest, Rick. Rick, you are a Bears fan, uh, I take it, and I'm going to let you get things started here, man. Tyson Badgett led you to the win last week. Looks pretty solid in that effort. Do you think that continues here? And do you think the Bears are alive for an upset over a struggling Chargers team? Uh, well, first off, thank you guys for having me on. Excited to uh, talk some ball with some fellow ball knowers. Um, Tyson Bajan, man. Uh, if there's one thing Chicago loves, it's our backup quarterbacks. Uh, we would rather rally around the backup that threw for 160 yards than actually go support the QB1. It's because of that. I don't think we actually deserve to ever have a good quarterback. Um, so I don't really see the magic continuing. Uh, Chargers have been pretty brutal on defense this year, but Pass rush has looked scary. It's kind of an anomaly that they've racked up so many sacks and still been so bad, especially uh, defending the pass. I think Bosa, Khalil Mack, uh, they got a second-round guy out of USC. Tool, I don't even want to try to pronounce his name. It's very Hawaiian. It's like Tuli Tua Pelotu or something, but he was an All-American last year. He's also getting after the quarterback. Uh, so I think that pressure is really what folds Bajan, and I think the Chargers win pretty handily here tonight, or Sunday night. Yeah, so currently looking at a spread of eight and a half points. Schwartz, the Bears are undefeated since you left Chicago. It's hard to see them winning this game outright as eight and a half point underdogs, but do you think they can cover this big spread? Yeah, I'll pick against the secret Bajan man as soon as he plays against a quarterback who threw more touchdowns than he did in college, which is nobody ever. But no, jokes aside, I if there's a side, it's the Bears in this one, man. I mean, I just don't know if the Chargers are going to be able to get a stop. Like, well, not a stop. It's still the Bears. But if they're not, if they're going to, I don't know if they're going to get stops to cover this spread. The Bears offense has had its moments this year with Justin, with Bajan. I mean, they scored 31 points last week and you could say, yes, that's a terrible defense. But this is a terrible defense. The Chargers are 29th in defensive DVOA, 31st in EPA. I'm going to make my official pick the over on 46 and a half because the Bears rank pretty similarly. 28th in both DVOA and EPA. The over number is 46 and a half for those curious. One weird thing I want to bring up is the Chargers defense. As we look, as we look at this little metric chart, the run defense is 27th in DVOA, but 17th in success and 7th in EPA. So I don't even know what to make of that. We're going to have to see how that plays out because the Bears are a pretty efficient rushing offense. But both teams blitz more than they're able to actually pressure. I think it's going to be field day for Justin Herbert. Big day for DJ Moore. I'm excited to see this one. Should be a lot of points. And I, I think the Bears are covering, but I'm not going to bet on Tyson on the road just yet. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried about Justin Herbert right now. I got to be honest. Um, I just don't think he's playing good football. Out of 24 quarterbacks with 100 plus dropbacks over the past month, he's dead last in the adjusted completion rate and fourth highest turnover worthy play rate. And you just watch the film. He's just, he's basically a one-read quarterback right now. Also, Eckler has been open for these underneath routes. He's just been ignoring him. I think Quentin Johnson has gotten open more than you've realized because of Justin Herbert's lack of reading the field right now. And like, I like the play calling overall on film, but I don't know. There's just something off with Herbert, and I can't really put my finger on it. I don't know if it's a hand injury or what's going on, but Cody, I'll, I'll ask you, do you agree on this Herbert situation right now? Do you see him bouncing back against the Bears defense? I mean, I made a comment about it a few weeks ago, and, and, and it was hard to like. It's hard to pinpoint like these uh, troubles with his injury because one, it's not in his non-throwing hand. But dude, I mean, these are some grown men we're talking about. When you take a hit from that, especially on your uh, blind side like that, like you're going to be thinking about your hand. It's going to affect everything. You got to be sharp to be an NFL quarterback. At least I imagine I'm barely even sharp enough to get out of bed some days. Um, I just until like kind of until we see otherwise. I don't know if he's going to be bouncing back like anytime soon now you can make the joke if you want a bounce back spot the bears are probably the perfect team to do it but even if he does bounce back this bears offense under bajan i think they're more than capable of at least staying within the number um you can find this at a few flat nines uh out in some shops this defense man this chargers defense i i it's one of the most confusing things probably in the nfl right now they have absolute talent at all three levels and yet this unit is still 29th in overall defensive dvoa they cannot defend the pass to save their lives. 31st in EPA, 30th success rate, 29th in DVOA. DJ Moore, I think we have another big DJ Moore game going on. 
um fellow twitter guy over here rick he kind of um dunked on me pretty hard last time i was making fun of the bears pass attack and more decided to go absolutely wild against the commanders this i'm i'm not gonna tuck my tail between my legs i'm backing the fact that i think more is gonna absolutely explode out here and then that's not even factoring the ground game now the uh the chargers do a great job at defending run at least inside the red zone but when it comes to midfield success those metrics drop that at least gives the Bears the chance to uh, consistently move the the sticks and um, maybe capitalize the scoring position. I mean, one touchdown, we're talking a massive swing, at least towards covering as a big dog like this. I'm taking Bears plus nine. Yeah, I don't hate it. That's the way I would lean as well. Uh, Rick brought up the Chargers pass rush earlier, and I do want to give Darnell Rice some credit. He's been gutting through a left shoulder injury and basically played the whole game last week one-handed and still had great tape against Max Crosby, allowed four yeah. pressures total in the game. And you know, we're watching Jalen Carter explode for the Eagles and become one of the best defensive linemen in the league. And there's always going to be that question of what if the Bears just took him. But I think Darnell Wright's been performing really well for where they drafted him. And I think he's definitely a core piece of this team moving forward. Um, Rick, do you agree about this This DJ Moore point? Do you think he has success against his Chargers team? We'll talk more about it in player props, but it seems to be a good matchup for him. Uh, I want to actually first talk about the offensive line point that you brought up. Uh, the Bears all line last week, it was the best I have seen in probably years. I played left yeah. tackle in high school, so that's kind of what I pay attention to. Darnell Wright and Larry Borum, they weren't perfect on the edge, but containing Max Crosby, like you said, I think they only had one sack last week, which is, you know, huge to keep a young guy like that up, right? But the interior line, we finally got to the combo I've been looking for for over a year. All these guys have been dealing with injuries. We've had to move guys around, have them playing out of position. Cody White here at left guard, Lucas Patrick at center, and Tevin Jenkins at right guard, who was a second-round pick for us in the Justin Fields draft. Those guys were moving bodies in the trenches. We were running between the tackles. Deontay Foreman was obviously had three touchdowns, a killer game. If we can establish the run like we did that, especially between the tackles behind those three guys, I think that's the key to the Bears covering that number. Um in terms of the passing attack, I just can't be high on a DJ Moore points explosion on a guy who's only shown us 160 yards. Uh, I mean, Bajan was tech down city last week. I think, you know, he'll rack up the receptions maybe, but I don't see a ton of yards or touchdowns coming from Moore. Yeah, we'll talk more about that in the player props. Uh, worth noting, Donna Wright is on the injury report with that shoulder issue, but he's been dealing with it for a couple of weeks and don't expect him to be out because of that. Hopefully, Roshan Johnson, Ricky running back, will be back here. Uh, had a concussion that's been keeping him out. And with Khalil Herbert out, having him back in the lineup would be huge to help spell Deontay Foreman. Um, she wants to go back to you. Do you think the, the Bears run game can be a big factor in this one to help them stay within the number? Yeah, and that's the, that's the really interesting aspect of the game here, whether the Bears are going to be able to keep moving the chains, not to set themselves up on third and long for someone like Tyson, who's less experienced. But yeah, the Bears' uh, running offense grades pretty well. The running back room's been a little bit of a revolving door with all the injuries, but I'm uh, so much more of a proponent of offensive line play in terms of running game success than the actual running backs. And like Rick got after, I mean, man, the interior O-line is finally intact. Tevin Jenkins is very close to the team's best offensive player when he's playing uh, well and healthy. I think there's a real chance against the Chargers front seven that's been like, it's super talented in a lot of ways, but... Just spotty, especially since some of their, you know, some of the most talent they're supposed to have is on the edge, and the Bears are so good at running the ball on the inside. So I think it could be a factor. I think the Bears could stay inside the number, but I don't know. We'll see. I'm excited. Yeah, the Chargers are just a poorly coached football team right now, man. I mean, I think we we got to get back to that. Like we talk about how much talent they have, and it's underperforming. Well, that's just that's coaching right there. And Cody, I know you're not a huge fan of Brandon Staley. Um, got any words you want to put out there about him? No, I mean, just these rants are just same old, same old. I mean, he's just an absolute dingus. Like, I mean, I've been on record to routinely say this is probably some of the worst, like, coaching I've seen in both college and professional. I mean, I watch a lot of football. Like, I mean, I'm, I am watch almost every single, like, game. And Brandon Staley still comfortably takes the cake. Like, I don't even know who sniffs him. Like, it's so bad. Like, there's no situational awareness. Obviously, the fourth down goal line situations we don't need to bring up. It's just constantly on tape. Like, I just it's, it's 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 incredible how much one person just can completely fold like their whole team, and that's exactly what Staley does. I don't know how he survives this season. You don't even see any really rumblings about like getting rid of him. I, I, like the Chargers are doomed until further notice until they get this guy out of there. Well, on the coaching front, last question for Rick before we get out of here: 
do you think Matt Eberflus can be the coach moving forward, or do you, do you think they need to move on after this season? No, I, I think it's over. I think um, I don't know anyone who's excited when the hire was made. I don't know anyone who's high on him now. Um, he's kind of lost the fan base. Doesn't I mean we're still winning some games, so he hasn't completely lost the locker room. Uh, but no, I'm not high on Eberflus, a four-three guy, defensive first head coach, succeeding in the modern NFL. Yeah, I tend to agree. Um, well, let's move on. We'll get into our player props video. Do a quick recap of our picks. Nothing official for me on this game. I might, I might, bet, I might bet the Bears if it hits ten. I don't think that's going to happen, but it's kind of a dead number right now. Schwartz, you like the over? Yeah, and it's just what you said. I'm leaning on the Bears, but it's such a weird number to be betting at. I think that if it goes to double digits, I'll join you, but I don't see it happening. So we'll stick to over forty six and a half for the moment. And Cody. Man, I can't believe for how much I've like publicly said how much I hate the Bears that I'm the one backing them. Yeah, give me Bears plus nine. And honestly, if it's 10, I'll add even more to it. Yep. Godspeed, man. Uh, I'll be rooting for you. And if I can get a, a live number on the Bears, I might join you. But it's, it's a pass for me for right now. So we want to our player props video. Thank you guys for watching. Um, oh, you're not going to ask Rick what he's on? What are we doing here? Yeah, I was uh, wondering the same thing. Amateur hour. Any, wow. I thought you didn't have any official picks, man. Uh, I'll throw one out. You know, if you're going to bring me on the pot, I got to come with a pick, right? Go for it. Uh, I, I'm kind of a similar boat as Schwartz. Uh, I think Chicago's, our offense has enough to hang around, but I don't trust either of those teams to cover this number. I'm going to go with the over. All right. So we got two overs. We got Cody on the Bears on the island over there, and then nothing official for me. It's going to pass, but going to be looking for some Bears live potentially. Um, That'll do it for us. Check out our player pops video where we get into some more of these individual matchups. Um, didn't get to talk about Keenan Allen at all, but he's having, he's having an awesome year. Hopefully we'll talk about him in the player props. Um, thank you, Rick, for joining us. Uh, if you want to shout out your Twitter or anything like that. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can follow me. W underscore B underscore Rick WBR. Uh, but yeah, I got nothing to plug. Cool. Sounds good, man. And yeah, thank you guys for joining us. Um, Please like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next video.